Hi everybody, welcome to Sunday afternoon Monkey Island Madness. And I was sitting here playing with inks and they trick headed me into streaming. So this is taped live over at Ustream TV and I am talking to a live audience. So I hope um, I hope it records and will go on YouTube because this was actually a request from Lynn in Raleigh and um, she had sent me a link. I had got these um, it says Calero on the packaging I don't know where the box is. I need box because the box has all the names on it. Well, I just had it. Anyway, um, if you order them on Amazon they show up as fine tech but this is the box that they come in and these are some of the shiniest gold you've ever seen. I'll move it so you can see it. Can you see? You guys can't see the shiny like I... Oh my god. These are the coolest ever. So she was talking about using them with um, dip pens. Hi Judy. Um, and so today I just decided and I have used other watercolors um, with dip pens, but to me, I'm going to be honest, to me, when you already have pre-mixed inks and everything, it's kind of a hassle to do it. But honestly, for these fine tech, I am all over it. I'm all over it because if I could draw a line with this gold and do like illuminated art, I would be so happy. So, it is recording. Um... She did. She Oh, she chewed me out for ordering this. But the stupid thing is, I ordered this, and then I said something about it, and she says, Oh, I already have it. Like, hello, she has everything. Hi, Dorothy. So, um, yeah, don't ignore what I say most of the time, Ange, because usually I'm telling the truth, and she's pulling your leg. Um... Pam was talking about a uh, clay-based paper, and what did she call it? Um, I used to do layouts on it. Um, for India Ink, if you get that clay paper, India Inks and stuff, oh, they will write so smooth on that clay back paper. I have some around here. I'm, I might go look for it before morning. Um, I think it's downstairs in my work stuff, but it's a clay back paper. Chrome coat, that's it. And yeah, it's it's nice paper, and I I imagine you can get it in different weights. The stuff I used was really really heavy. So okay, CB has them too, so I get to have them. The one thing I learned about these that are different than other watercolors, um, when you're going to use them in a dip pen, they've got to be very 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 runny, very runny. And so that's why it took me a while. I threw most of my um, practice stuff away. But this is when I finally got it to start working good. You can kind of see. Um, this was the first one that really worked out well. And I had to get it really a lot runnier than, um, than I thought I would have to, to get it to work in a dip pen. And so before that, I was just messing with... Um, this used to be my favorite. If I was going to use a dip pen for drawing, this was my absolute favorite nib and um, nib holder. So I was just using all the different kind of inks that I've got. You know, India ink, fountain pen ink, calligraphy. Calligraphy is actually the nicest ink to use in a dip pen because it's formulated for that. And then the Liquitex acrylic and the FW acrylic. Um, just playing with them with a, a regular writing nib, seeing how far the ink could go, and then with a calligraphy nib. Um, and the acrylic has, um, you can tell it sits on top of the paper, but the, the paper you're using um, definitely makes a difference in how each one of these inks behave. One thing that really surprised me, and now I'm just a little hacked off at myself that I didn't get more, was these um, watercolor inks from Bria Reese at um, Hobby Lobby. 
those work awesome in the dip pen. Um, and obviously they're they're meant to be diluted. I mean these are very very rich pigment, but um, boy did they this look, worked really nice. So now I wish I bought more of them because you could have gotten so many colors. I actually like the watercolors better than the acrylic inks. So um, apparently the the fine tech do come in a ton of different colors and whatnot. I probably won't buy them. Um, the gold I think I will use, um, but the rest of them that have the metallic base I probably won't use any of those, so I won't buy them. And then Jeannie's now sending me links for the Sargent Arts um, metallics, but honestly these are going to last me forever. And they're so pretty. I mean, and I've actually used these a lot, but they look like they haven't been used at all. So. Because I've just been playing with them since I got them. I really, really, really like them. So the way I started this was I just took a big watercolor brush and splattered some water on them. And I'll go back and do these as well. These have already been wetted. So they should soften pretty easy. And this is the one, the Tibet Gold. I think that's my favorite. So... So just slap some water in there, and more than you think you're going to need. That was the one thing that kind of surprised me, and I was thinking, golly. I even went and watched um, YouTube videos. Yeah, I can't think of really anything I really need. Now, if those Bria Reese watercolors are on sale when I go to Hobby Lobby on um, Tuesday, I, I frankly will get some more of those. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself some straight lines here. Alright, what did I do with my cool pencil? Lost it. Oh well. This one I'll have to do. I'm driving myself crazy, dragging stuff out to the living room, dragging it back, dragging it out, dragging it back. And I'm not spacing this, I'm just using this as a straight edge. Really, where'd my 03 pencil go? Oh, there it is. All right, never mind, found it. Using my cool rolling ruler, which I love. Um, so I'll use the um, this type of pen. I think worked a little bit better than the just the drawing nib um, because it has a bigger reservoir. Um, it did work with this, and you can see I didn't get all the acrylic ink off that. But anyway, I'll move the other inks out of the way. I'm gonna start from scratch, and I'm not following any alphabet. I'm just writing letters. Okay. So the way I ink it up is just load up back here with a bunch of the ink and then I might have to add water because I mean I was shocked really how wet it had to be to get it to work good. Alright, let me find the box because it's got the names on it. So this first one is Tibet Gold. See when it, if it if it's not flowing real nice, um, I'm going to add just a little bit extra water. And it's if you're going to end up doing this, it is going to take a little bit of practice. Get something on my nib. And I'm writing on um, the HP laser jet paper um, just because it was handy. This is stuff I would have thrown it 
thrown away anyway. So, all right, I think I got it right. It's flowing a little bit. Now that I'm on screen, it's not wanting to flow like it was. Ah, uh, come on, quit being a pain in the butt. I might have to wash this nib now. Because I let it sit while I was... There, it's flowing a little bit better. Alright, I'm going to wash it. I'm not fighting with the damn nib. There we go. Now it's flowing like crazy. And I misspelled Tibet. But see how runny it has to be? which that's one of the things that really, really surprised me. And it doesn't get that bright, bright shine. I can't believe I misspelled Tibet. Tibet. It's Tibet gold. And if I didn't tell you guys, nobody would have ever recognized that I did that, I bet. Okay. And the nice thing about watercolor in your dip pen is really all you got to do is... Um, Splash it in water a little bit and it comes just clean as it can be. And the second one is Inca Gold. Alright, that's pretty fluid, so we should see. And I do dot any excess off on a pa piece of paper that I have over here. So this is Inca Gold. Yeah, this is working good now. And I know I'm not forming all my letters correctly. I need to go back and relearn some of it. But this really is quite watery. Wait till it dries. And this is all I've been doing all afternoon, is sitting here jacking with inks and the pens and cleaning them. I do need to run a bunch of them through the ultrasonic cleaner. I do know that. And who would have thought there'd be so many different colors of gold?
can't tell if I got the right amount of water or not. There we go. I think that is. Third one is Arabic. Okay, I'm reading chat real quick. Eileen would have what? Already my bad. Are you spellbound? <laughs> That's probably hard to believe. So I'm tickled. The one thing I'm going to try real well, I'm going to wait until I get it flowing real, real good. Because the one thing I think I will use this for is illuminated art. Some of these I might have to add more water to. Oh, I may have gotten a different color in the sterling silver. Really this is a product that I'm I'm tickled with. I I'm really glad I ordered this. And don't hold your pen over your product when you're filling it because if you flip the brush you'll get little specks or you'll drop a blob of ink on it which I've done before Eileen would have thought there was a million gold colors yeah, well, it's all in her warehouse, like Fort Knox. I might have gotten this a little too wet, but it's flowing, so we're going with it. This is gold pearl. All right, I got that booger off it. When you get it r flowing good, it's not that much trouble. So This one obviously is a lighter gold or no it is wait until I move it sideways I'm just drawing over here at the side because I want to see after it's loaded really how much ink you get you know how much longer could I write I 
I think if I sat down and practiced, I could um, get my calligraphy skills back up to speed pretty quick. I really do. Because I can feel when something feels right now, and I can also feel when I've done something totally wrong. I think I could get it back pretty darn quick. This one's going to be real light compared to the others, I think. It's moon gold. I wonder if there is gold on the moon. There we go. I think that's a good amount. Oh, buying magical shakers one at a time. Well, I'm not going to order any until I decide if I can make my own out of the... Um, little bottles because I really want the flats Okay, I'm running out, so I obviously didn't load this one up as much, or I don't know. Oh, that was probably too much water. We'll find out. Yes, it was. Yeah, I guess they all behave just a little differently. Don't know why. Why why aren't you putting the ink in the reser reservoir? Well, I am. The reservoir is underneath here. I am. I'm putting it I'm letting it flow under there. I'm not sure I understand your question. I am filling the reservoir. On this type of pen, um, that little clippy do on the back is, in fact, your reservoir. I'm letting it flow back there, Dorothy. I'm not, I'm not sure what your answer is, but it's kind of how I can tell if I've got enough water when it starts flowing. And this one I may have gotten a little bit too wet, but we will see. This is the Sterling Silver. It's really amazing. Yep, there we go. I need one more line. What is the bit on top of the nib? I think it just keeps your... Um, <clears throat> yeah, your reservoir is underneath. It's the bottom. The top... Oh, my three-point pe pencil isn't working again. Doggone it. This thing, don't buy the three. It's a pain in the ass. Um, I mean, I, it helps the ink flow, but it also keeps the tines, because this has three tines on this one. Um from separating. 
they know you well I don't want to say you normally don't see that on a drawing nib but you don't um this is not the reservoir up here the reservoir is under here can you see and on a I'll show you when I, I don't want this to dry this is sterling silver might be hard for you guys to see this because this is almost white should have done this one on a um, dark paper and this sterling silver is wanting to dry pretty quick could be just the nature of the beast there now it's flowing good When I turn this sideways, you'll be able to see it. Ster oh, I spelled sterling wrong. Yeah, the sterling sub silver this is the first time I've used it it is a little more particular than the golds I don't know why so each one apparently is going to have its own learning curve a little bit you guys I am living in like a land of ice today oh my god it started icing yesterday afternoon and this morning the driveway is just a sheet of ice and everything and it's been so cold today that nothing has thawed either so even if we wanted to go somewhere which we had already um, canceled breakfast because Robert wasn't feeling good yesterday um, but yeah like you're not going anywhere today nowhere it's opposite way up to the way I'm used to okay Hi, Mac. I'm tired today, too. I slept downstairs last night so that Robert would get a good night's sleep, and as a result, I suffered. But that's okay. Because when I'm sick, he's going to pay. Yeah, baby. All right, so here's all the different colors, which looks much nicer. Can you see that sterling silver? Oh, you could even see it that way. But yeah, like these are some kind of gold. Do these look like the Sergeant Arts, Jeannie? Look at that gold. <sighs> oh my God, it's so pretty. I just can't believe how shiny these are and how good they feel. Like, you can feel them on the paper. Of course, this paper is not going to absorb as readily as other papers, but your paper is going to make a big difference, too. Hi, Fiona. I could just hug Hope until she coughs. Yeah, I'm loving the fine tech. You wouldn't spend money on what? These inks? Oh, I'm tickled to death that I paid money for these inks. I want to get, I want to see them on a dark background. I'm going to go get some um, either black or dark blue paper. Just a scrap.
Okay. Now we'll look on them, at them on a dark background. And now I bet they'll really be awesome. Oh, she's talking about the Paint Mojo book. Yeah, I'm not going to buy, I won't buy any of those books. But I don't, um, I don't do collage like Dee Dee anyway. Um, I love it when she does it and I love watching it. But I, I honestly, I have no desire to do it. It's just not my thing. I, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't do it. All right, this is definitely needing more water. And as you do it, I think you'll just get a feel for how much water to put on because I can't tell you, um, I, cause I, I mean, I don't know myself really, and I don't know, um. Yeah, I suppose at some point it'll just become second nature to me. Anyway, I didn't um, I didn't watch for Jeannie's response after I asked her that if these look equivalent to the Sergeant Arts. Here we go. We're getting some good gold. I won't write so big this time. This was the first one, which is acrylic paint techniques. Yeah, and I don't, I won't do that either. I'm just not a huge, um, I'll try and spell Tibet right this time. Look at how pretty that is on the black. Now, what I'm going to have to do, learn how to do, because a dip pen is really, really hard to use with a straight edge. Um, I have one ruler here that I keep handy that the numbers are all rubbed off. You couldn't probably use this to... Um, measure if your miserable life depended on it but it's got cork on the back so it lifts your ruler up off your paper really nicely so if you're gonna um, use ink on it alright sweet so if I ink this up really good and I'm running out of ink you can tell over here on the end but if I ink this up really good, I think I could use the calligraphy nib. Because I couldn't do this freehand with a paintbrush, I promise you. I just couldn't. I'm not that good. Some people might be, not me. Oh man, that is some kind of perfect. Now that gets me all excited, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> it really doesn't. But to know that I could make a perfect gold rule for a border or something. Hello, who wouldn't want to do that? Duh. Hi, Dee Dee. Didi, don't watch my um, calligraphy, okay, please? I'm using the Fine Tech watercolors um, in a dip pen, Didi. Um, Lynn from Raleigh wanted to see it, so I've been here today practicing. It's 
it's a little bit different that you've got to get them really really running but um, I'll do a different kind now I'm drawing with a calligraphy nib which is weird but yeah I'm really really happy with these one of my better purchases and I don't even care if I made Eileen mad she can get unmad in the same panty she got mad in know what I mean alright now I'll put it in just the writing nib rather than the calligraphy nib the reservoir on the writing nib my favorite writing nib is not as big so you have to refill it more frequently yeah solid gold, gold zen tangles on a black background who wouldn't love that are you kidding this is so shiny it will knock your eyeballs out I'm not kidding you Oh, I guess I should try not to contaminate them. I'm real bad about that. Contaminate them. You bought them for Cam last year. He loves them. Yep. I I can totally see why. The only thing I that kind of surprised me, Didi, was um, to use it in the dip pen. Um, they have to be so runny. I mean, really runny, like. Of course, I guess ink is really runny, so why should I be surprised? But, um, yeah. So, and on a pen like this, your reservoir is, in fact, that hole. So, and never go direct to your finished piece of art. Always write off on something else first. Let's see if this bad boy wants to write. It was writing good just a minute ago. There we go. Now it's not wanting to, which means I don't have it moist enough. And I don't want to put a lot of water in it. And I like these this because you can get like the finest line ever there. I got it just the right consistency. Can you see how tiny, tiny that writing line is? So now I'm going to, while it's still real wet, I want to see. And I ha have um, gold calligraphy ink, but it is not like this. Not even close to this. Can you see that? That is, this makes me really, really happy. Because if I'm, if I'm doing like illumination or something like that, I can get just like the finest um, lines. And I won't have to, um, yeah, this will be a whole lot easier than the way I used to have to do it. So, all right. I'm excited about this. I really am. These are going to be uber useful. And I really am kind of surprised how far the ink is going.
All right, I'm starting to run out now without really pushing. So, <sighs> all right, I'm done playing with these. If you guys want to see something else, speak up now or forever hold your peace. Um, they're better. Okay. All right. Jeannie, you just saved me some money because I won't. I wasn't. I didn't think I was going to buy the Sergeant Arts anyway. Um, but yeah, these are pretty nice. I'm going to clean this brush. This is not. This is the crappiest water brush I have, and it's my favorite. Um, we'll try one of these down here, and I'll just do brush lettering on it. I'm psyched about being able to do, draw that rule so perfectly. And the only other thing I thought I would do while you guys were here was practice my brush lettering, which I haven't done in a couple days, so. But there's the brush lettering with the gold, so I can actually, if I use a, a better brush. Let me see if I have a better brush right off. And then this, I don't know about this Schminka stuff. I don't know. I'm liking this a lot. So thank you, Journal Artista, for enabling me. We're supposed to take Eileen seriously, but of course, but of course. Um, <clears throat> nope, dip pens, just a dip pen. Now, one thing I have not done is try it in. I know a lot of the ladies have recently purchased, um, and maybe based on me um, drawing with it, but they bought the glass pens. Um... I have not honestly tried this with the glass pen. Um, I don't know if it'll dry too quick or not, but since we've got the mess out, let's give it a go. Um, they, as a rule, work just like a dip pen. The swirls in the glass are your reservoir. So I think if you load up that, it's got to be runny, though. And if it's not runny, I mean fluid runny, it's not going to work at all. So. Oops. Move over here to drip the water right so I don't get it all over. You can see if it's going to be runny enough, it should run down the pen. I still don't know if it's, um, okay, it's about ready to drip. When you can see it like that, that means you're about right. And you might want to drop off that first drip onto something else. Yep, it's working on the glass pen too. So the, I think the trick is just um, keep playing with the, the watercolors until you can tell. There, I wrote glass pen. You can see it. It's very, very fine. Now this, the problem with this is this pen is dedicated to that size nib. If you get a dip pen, and you can get them pretty inexpensively, the, the handles and the nibs themselves at um, Hobby Lobby or any of them, in the 
um, art department. I have never looked. Um, you do have a beautiful glass pen, but more importantly than the glass pen, I only bought the glass pen, Eileen, so that I could send you the box. <laughs> I made a box and then I had to buy the pen to put in it. Yeah, see, I'm on to brush lettering too, but now that I have this, I don't know. I, I will definitely be using the dip pens again. Um, but for drawing like or writing just writing I do like this glass pen I have to say I like it a lot but for versatility and if you really want to do calligraphy or something like that go ahead and invest in a dip pen the thing I would say about a dip pen is um, you have to keep them clean um, are they Mitchell's nibs? Well, I have every kind of nib in the world, Dorothy. Um, I think I might not have Mitchell's, and I'll have to go out and buy some. Um, but all of my calligraphy are like this. And let me see if I can see who makes them. I'm going to have to get out a magnifying glass, though, because I can't see. You know you're old when you have a magnifying glass within arm's reach. Now that's just baloney. I'm sorry. And a bright light. These are speedball. All of these in here are speedball. And I did separate mine out. Well, that one's not a speedball. Um, this one's brand new. Oh, that's a speedball too. But then you can get all the different kind of nibs at art stores. Um, Hobby Lobby and Michaels are only going to carry um, a, a small number of the nibs themselves. Um, but then, of course, you can always go to Jet Pens. Hello, and buy any and all of this. I don't know what these are. This just says journal, and this uses a different handle, so. Um, I would say Speedball. Speedball ha makes good products. You know, I don't know. I would just say, yeah, Speedball. Get the Speedball. And I've had a lot of this for years and years and years. But the thing about those steel nibs is you've got to keep them clean. And when you're done with them, you've got to make sure they're dry. They have to be dry or they're going to they're going to rust. You have to take care of them. So if you're not inclined to be taking care of stuff, don't set yourself up for failure. Mine could all use a really good cleaning right now. This is my all-time favorite drawing nib, though. And I've had it, oh, I'll bet this nib alone. Let's see. I bought it prior to 1980, so this nib, I'll bet, is 40 years old. I'm not kidding. But if you take good care of it, there's no reason that it shouldn't last. Pretty much the same with all of your products, frankly. So that's just my feeling. So no, Dorothy, to answer your question, no, I do not have Mitchells. That Maybe that's a UK thing, I don't know. But here, what you're going to find most commonly is Speedball. Um, this is a Koenor, and I've had this also for years. I paid 59 cents for it. Um, but most of these I've literally had years and years. I do have an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, but my ultrasonic cleaner... I mean, I'll put these in there if they get crusty enough, but usually I just use some mild soap and a soft bristle toothbrush, and you can clean these up and get them dry really quick. Yeah. Oh, there's tons of different nibs out there, you guys. I mean, yeah, like if you go on the Internet and start looking, um... Don't buy anything special until you know if it's something you're really going to enjoy. These nibs, honestly, they have been so useful to me. You can even see how they're worn. I used to use these really, really a lot. 
Um, not so much anymore. But we're spoiled now because there's so many kinds of um, fountain pens available with every kind of nib available. But yeah, it's just take care of your stuff and there's no reason it won't last forever. If you press too hard on it, like this one, if I press too hard on this nib, I'm going to bend it. And there's actually two tines. There's a split right down the center there where the ink flows down. If I press too hard on that, I'm. this is... Um, I mean, you're going to bend it. If you bend it, don't try and bend it back. Go buy a new one. You, it's not going to work ever, ever again. That's why this kind of stuff, when the grandkids come, you hide it. You don't let them know you even own it because otherwise you're forced into a position of having to say, no, you little idiot, you're not playing with that. Even when they get to be teenagers and young adults, I'm not going to let them play with my stuff because they don't appreciate it and don't know how to take care of it. Certain things they can play with, I don't care. So yes, I do have an ultrasonic cleaner, but that is not for these nibs. I bought that for um, technical pens. If any of you have used the Kohenor technical pens or the Rapidiograph technical pens, you'll know why you need an ultrasonic cleaner. You spend half your life cleaning them. So anyway, highly recommend Define Tech Paints, and I so appreciate um, Journal Artista for enabling me. And I'm saving the box because the name of the colors, until I learn the name of the colors, it's on the box. So, um, yeah. And I don't know how much those were, you guys. I think they were around 20-something dollars, but I don't know that for sure. If you go on there and it's more than that, don't hate me forever. Or hate me forever, just don't talk about me. Eh, you can talk about me too, I don't care. Alright, and then I was going to, just because I haven't done it, and forever, I thought if I'm still, because this is what I was going to do anyway, it's sitting right here, I was actually going to practice some brush lettering. And those, again, I will wash really good before I put them away. And for right now, I'm just practicing on really, really cheap, um notebook filler paper and um, for the most part I'm still using that Tombow Food Nasuki pen with the rubberized tip and I don't mind Eileen seeing this because I'm not hiding anything from her in here well, I was hiding this and then Paul in her big mouth. <laughs> was that a joy I saw in there? Shh, shh, don't say anything, Paula. <laughs> busted. We're busted. All right, I think it's the blue. No, this is the one. Nope. It's the black that's the... Um, soft tip I think. Let me double check. Yep. I love these pens. Love them. Yeah. It's the black that I like. I cheated. But, okay, Eileen, honestly, when I cheat, don't I always fess up to you? At some point, I come crawling and say, I have a confession to make. <laughs> I always do, so you can't say. Like, if you fess up, that almost absolves you of all your sin, doesn't it? That's how I think. If I just confess my sins, I should be absolved. I'm trying not to cheat, okay? Hi, Kimberly. And everybody that I've missed while I've just been running off at the mouth. 
I don't know if I should do some more exercises. I really should. All right, we'll warm up with just some basic. And then I can't stay that long because I've got to fix the rat something to eat. Poor sick baby. A few months later you do. Well, it wasn't a few months. Oh my God. I don't feel bad. And I'll just tell you right now, um, mouth exercises, yeah. I'll tell you right now, Eileen, if I go to Hobby Lobby on Tuesday and they have good deals, I probably am going to spend some money. You know, when I learned calligraphy, um, one of the things they talked about a great deal was your posture, that your posture would so affect your ability to letter. I haven't seen that in the brush lettering books, so I don't know if they've given up on that whole concept or what. Um, the only thing is don't, you know, squeeze your pencil. You, you do hold your pen differently, um, and I think I'm pretty good at that now. I'm not squeezing it like I was when I started. and letting it rest. I'm hoping they don't have anything, but if they do, Eileen, and it's a good deal. And one thing I will tell you, I don't think they'll have it, though. I'm pretty sure they will not. But if they have these um, Brio Reese watercolor inks real cheap again, like what were they, a buck, buck 24 or something, I will buy more of these because these in the dip pen were awesome. Just saying. And the FW inks are okay with a dip pen. They dry quickly, so you've really got to be cognizant about um, keeping your pen clean. Dee Dee, do you do the exercises or you do, do you just jump in and do a project? I'm getting pretty good at just doing the exercises and paying attention to my spacing. So pretty soon I'm going to jump in and do a big project. I thought about doing one for Hope. Oh, and Hope's thing is sitting here with the borders on it if you guys want to see that too. So how many of you guys are actually doing the brush lettering? Seems like everybody is. Okay, here's a better question. Who's bought the products <laughs> for brush lettering and is actually using them? And I'm doing this big. Figure if I can stay steady and do them perfect big, when I do them small, they'll be easier. That, that whole row was pretty good. I'm okay with that row. No products and no, you're not doing them. Okay. CB's trying. Good, CB. You do letters for practice. See, I, I have to do this to get myself in the right mind frame. Because if I know if I ever get my spacing for this stuff right, when I go to do the lettering, it will be second nature. That's what I'm hoping.
How are you coming along with it, CB? Are you practicing? I was really good for a while. I was practicing really, really regularly. Though the spacing on those is not bad. It's better anyway. And I think doing stuff like this, because you're not writing a word, because I'll tend to go back into my normal handwriting or um, makes you think that you're actually drawing these rather than um, just doing your regular handwriting, which my regular handwriting isn't that great to begin with. And I'm still not great at ovals. Would CB, you're practicing some. Okay, Jerry bought a book and two zigs, and you're using them. Okay. You have them, but so far you prefer the metal nibs. Well, the metal nibs is not going to really work with the brush lettering. Um, Because I think the unique thing about this is that it's the different pressure. I mean, I suppose you could do it with a metal nib, but um, I think the effect is much greater. When you have the give of the nib. And this, the ovals are definitely the hardest thing for me. There, that one finally was about right. Nobody's going to grade it, so who cares? I got to move this. It's in my way. So I could, I should do like a whole page of O's. And see, I had just started, probably because I was nervous about doing the O's and knowing that I'm going to not be good at them, I had started strangling my pen. So I've got to do O's until they're just second nature. Not great, but oh well. I do like to do this because you won't be bossing me around, bossy pants. <laughs> Pete didn't like having his tail used as a dip pen. Stupid cat. And that's probably one of my favorite exercises because it's almost like you can't goof up. And for whatever reason, the pressure falls at the exact right time. So this one I like. Now this is just the reverse of that, but this one is not as easy for me. Why is that? Like my brain doesn't like it or something? Yeah, that's why it's called brush lettering. Yeah, exactly. Now I'll do a whole row of small up and downs and see if I can keep my spacing somewhat.
All right. Hang on. Let me take the paper out of this. I've tried it with a real brush, and um, I have to say, that's a lot trickier than um, with these artificial brush nibs. I will say that for sure. Not great, but whatever. All right. All right, let's see what we got. If they have an exercise here. I'm actually just looking at the exercise in the Ultimate Brush Lettering Guide that, again, Journal Artista. Here, I'm still learning. We'll do I'm Still Learning. Okay, it looks like he does this. Okay, if you notice brush lettering, some of it they use all the same baseline, and then some of it they bounce the baseline. Um, this one, for the most part, they're using. Well, I'm still. They use the same baseline, and then learning they did the bounce where the vowels are up off the baseline. So we'll try and do it the way they do it. The one, one nice thing about brush lettering is, I mean, some people make it look so easy. Um, Kate Creates, I think, is the one. She makes it look so darn effortless, I have to say. Um, but I'm not sure that there's anything that's that perfect, you know? So, um, the way they're doing their... They do their eye really weird. You can tell that I'm just not feeling comfortable. And they were using a much um, bigger pen than I am for sure. Oops, that should have come all the way down to there. I'm still learning. Now, I'm not going to look at theirs. I'm just going to write Michelangelo the way I normally would. Isn't that true, Dee Dee? Everything looks effortless once you learn it. That's the truth. Yep.
and I haven't seen anybody do numbers yet so I guess it's just the same where you just so that's not so horrible huh hi Lynn I did the um, the inks earlier and so hopefully this recording will work and um, yeah so it's not great but that's how you learn right I'm still learning okay here's another one and back at, toward the back of the book they they talk a lot about composition and starting with pencil and laying it out and then moving to ink later and I've talked to you guys about that before you know I just jumped in and did this but I'm copying it out of a book you know like the book's sitting here and I'm looking at it but if you're gonna start from scratch with your own composition don't just jump in like that um, like center it and or work on the composition yeah I hope it recorded too if it didn't I will do it all again for you Lynn because I had fun I really had fun playing with inks today so um, this one I'm gonna just me and pencils I swear um, I'll do that like five high No, I'll do eight high. I know, and Eileen's sitting there going, Oh my God, what is she doing? <laughs> I want to know where my baseline is. Okay, because it starts at the baseline. And very lightly they come up. This is very big. I mean, they're doing this one very big. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to move the camera out here where you guys can see me. So that one would be I think a lot better you know because you're I think the size of your pen nib should match the size of your composition too like the, I'm still learning that was okay in the smaller nib um, this one I'm gonna go over this now with a bigger nib just to see ooh I don't like that now this is an actual brush, so it's going to act way, way, way different.
I'm obviously play, paying a lot more attention this time to my upstrokes and my downstrokes. And just because I'm practicing, I don't, I'm not being very critical of myself. I'm just kind of just trying to pay attention to what is it that I'm supposed to be learning. And you can kind of see what you've done well and not so well. And that's obviously very stylized, but, and that was with a real brush. Um, I meant to actually do the Tombow. I think it would have been easy, easier. I'll just try it again with the Tombow marker. Because the brush, I think, is a lot harder to control, for sure. It was definitely easier with the Tombow. <coughs> definitely easier with the Tombow. So, we'll try it small with the little pen. And this is the, the hard tip. So this is with the real brush. It's with the Tombow. I need a lot of practice is what this is telling me. What is Didi rolling your eyes about? Didi, don't roll your eyes when I'm writing. You can't do that. <laughs> it is it is easier with a thicker marker, yes. How much time do we spend trying to get people out of their fear of the art rules? There you go. I agree. 
Make up your own rules. Just do whatever. Do whatever. And your writing is not going to look like other people's anyway. You're gonna your own style is gonna emerge as you go. So, you know, like there there'll come a point in this where you just can't compare yours with Dee Dee's or the um examples in the book because yours aren't gonna be like theirs. Your J is gonna be different than theirs, you know, so um but I do like this book. It, if you thinking about doing it this book is very appealing. I do like this book. Um, this one, I think the examples of the letters are way, way better. So sometime real soon, I will move on to the actual letter construction um, itself. I really will. All good things are wild and free. So it's about time for me to start getting some dinner going so the rat can eat. And without Xandra, I guess we're all just going to be watching the Olympics tonight, eh? Anyway, um, I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, if you've watched on YouTube, thanks so much. Um, stay put, you guys. There's all my mess off my computer keyboard. <laughs>